Things they fed us for school lunch that we should not have been eating. Part 12. We have the sloppy joe. Now, elementary school kids have worse coordination than baby deer, so why would you give them something this messy? Whenever I ate these, I had a whole new pattern on my shirt by the end of it. Also, what was the meat in this? Because there was a ton of squirrels on our school playground, and then one day they were gone, and this was for lunch. The next day, I don't want to insinuate anything, but you know, it's a little suspicious. We have the green beans. They always serve these in these like styrofoam cups, and there was so much water in them, it was like its own aquarium exhibit. These were not good. If you really want kids to eat vegetables, at least make them taste good. I'd rather eat church wafers than this. And they were always so mushy, like you didn't even need tea to eat them. I think they got them mixed up with the nursing home food. And then we have the hot dogs. They had this weird requirement where they had to use wheat bread, but they didn't have any wheat buns, so they just put it on a piece of bread, and it was not the same. This looks like if Sad from Inside Out was a food, and then they did give you a little cheese cup and be like, it's cheese coney day. No, it's not. The things they fed us for school lunch that we should not have been eating. To be the banana, these were always so bruised, like Logan Paul after one of those TikToker versus YouTube matches. When you can't tell if the banana or the mashed potatoes are mushier, there might be a little bit of an issue. Most people are worried about if their produce is in season. I'm really worried about if these bananas were in decades. Maybe the salads, these were always like a little brown and wilting. Like, that's not a style of salad. That means it's just kind of past its prime. But these really were just a vehicle for us to douse and rant and then consume, so that's fine. But we did have a kid that got in trouble because he would always eat grass on the playground. And honestly, looking back at this, I can see where the confusion may have been for him. And look the mashed potatoes potatoes and gravy. First of all, the mashed potatoes were so grainy and gritty. It was like they shared an air vent with the wood shop class. This looked like somebody lost their lunch on this plate. Not like it's something you're supposed to eat. And what was the meat? Because they said it was turkey, but your teeth like sunk into it like foam. It kind of was like packing peanuts. And honestly, my school was one to cut corners. I wouldn't really put it past. These are things they fed us for school lunch that we should not have been eating. First, we have the tomato soup. This was always so watery, like they just put tomato juice in a cup, heated it up, and called it soup. Like, that's not how it works. And then I get it all over my shirt because they gave us a spork to eat it with, and that was like impossible, but at least we're getting our vegetables, I guess. So we have these pudding cups. They had these in a the to-go line sometimes, and they were really good, but they were always like, oh, you can only have one dessert. We don't want you having too much dessert. Why? I'm 12. I'm literally built to consume sugar. I'm about to go do cardio in the form of freeze tag for 30 minutes straight on the playground. I could never do that now. I'm on the treadmill for one Carly Rae Jepsen song, and then I'm kind of over it. Finally, the meatballs up. Where do I start? The meatballs were so tiny. It was like the ones Fazoli's didn't want three months ago. And there was just like a whisper of marinara on top. Like, sorry, budget cuts. It was like less than a Little Caesars pizza. And the cheese was always so rubbery. Like, it got mixed up with the play food from the kindergarten classroom. Like, it would not melt. There was not a heat source that could make it melt. It was really so things they fed us for school lunch that we should not have been eating. So we have the french fries. These were either one of two things, more flexible and bendy than an Olympic gymnast, or so burnt that it just tasted like salted cardboard, and either way you had to douse them in ketchup to make them bearable, but somehow they were still better than in and out fries. So we have the sandwich. The ham was always so rubbery. One time this kid, Brian, replaced the ham and this girl, Ashley, sandwich with a pink eraser, and she ate the whole thing and didn't notice, and we'd always throw the cheese against the wall, and it would, like, stick for an aggressive amount of time, but don't worry, the bun wheat bread. Look at the fish tacos. You can't just put a fish stick in a tortilla and call it a fish taco. I don't know why. I just know that you can't. And always the fish tasted so funky. Like they took a couple laps through sewage before they made it to our plate. And one time in fifth grade, we had a bunch of goldfish as our class pet. And then they were gone one day and we had fish sticks for lunch the next day. I don't think it was a coincidence. I think it was budget cuts and they just had to make do. Sorry, goldfish. I think they fed us for school lunch that we should not have been eating. So we have the beans. I guess this was a cute little way to get us some protein, but beans, the musical fruit, the more you eat, the more you toot. I literally thought a belching contest should be an Olympic sport in third grade, and then they spoon-fed us beans and then sent us back to a poorly ventilated classroom with our teachers. It must have smelled horrible. That's worse than locking someone in a Taco Bell bathroom for three hours. So we have the green beans. These were always so watery, like each serving came with its own kiddie pool. And why were they slimy? Like if a snail was hiding in here, I don't think I would have noticed. When were these from? Like they should not have been like that. When the green beans are older than the first graders, I think there's an issue. Finally, we have the tater tots. These were amazing. These were immaculate. This was like our little reward for getting through the rest. But when it was tater tot day, if you weren't in the first third of the lunch line, you were not getting any. And we all knew it. It was like more vicious than Walmart on Black Friday and the TVs were 75% off. It was a little crazy. My arteries did have to work overtime to like fix all the clogs, but I love them. These are things they fed us for school lunch that we should not have been eating. First of all, the pasta. Never have I had anything before that tasted so undercooked and overcooked at the same time. They were like, oh, it's al dente. I was like, no, I think you just burnt it. And it was always so watery, like it came with its own puddle. I think right after music classes, the budget cut's next victim was the pasta strainer. So we have the carrot medallions. First of all, how did you cut these with like squiggles in them? Were they using those safety scissors that we got in kindergarten so we wouldn't cut our own hair? And these were always so slimy. Like you could hide a slug in here and I don't think I would notice. And aren't carrots supposed to crunch because these would just bend. They were like that girl at recess that would always just do the splits just to show off. Then you have the wraps, the tortilla. It was always so chewy and flavorless. It tasted like they just gave us leftover clay from the art room and were like, ah, they won't notice. And the lunch meat was always so rubbery. Like, I don't know what kind of preservatives they were putting in this. It was preserved better than Abraham Lincoln's body. I think they just went to the mortuary and like, can we just use an embalming kit? The kids won't notice. They'll be fine.
These are things they fed us for school lunch that we should not have been eating. First, we have the fettuccine alfredo. It always looks so nice and tasted so bad, like those little Ferrero chocolates. Seriously, they sprinkled parsley on that when the alfredo sauce tastes like cement. And what was up with the noodles? Because one time they got the office supplies mixed up, and the noodles were actually just rubber bands, and nobody noticed. We all thought we were going to get Elastigirl powers, but we actually just got premature stomach ulcers. Next, we have the salad. What kind of class pet rabbit reject is this? Seriously, when you take this out of the playground and the squirrels aren't even interested, that's when you know you have a problem. Thank God we could just douse it in those ranch packets they would give us and fulfill our health food requirement for like the week. Finally, the barbecue sandwich. Which is, I appreciate what they were trying to do with this, but these were so dry. I really think the zombies in The Walking Dead were eating better quality food than we were. And they always give you like a tiny little barbecue packet. Like, if I don't have a kiddie pool full of barbecue sauce for my sandwich, I'm not interested. And these always showed up the most random times, and they were just called pulled meat sandwiches. Like, what meat? And it was always around the time that they were doing dissections on the science lab, so nothing goes to waste, I guess. These are things they fed us for school lunch that we should not have been eating. This would be the nachos. Oh my god, I think by definition chips have to crunch. These did not. They were doing back bends like they were in Miss Abby Lee Miller's dance studio. And what was the cheese? It was always so rubbery. It was like they just replaced cheese with silly putty and thought we wouldn't notice. So we have the chocolate milk. These were pretty good if you could find one that hadn't done a couple laps around its expiration date. Otherwise, you took one sip and found out you had a surprise slushy on your hands. And why were they feeding this to us at like 11 a.m. with pizza? Seriously, we just got potty trained like a couple years ago. That's like a marine level test to hold that all in. And we have the chicken tenders. I know the saying goes everything tastes just like chicken, but that doesn't mean you can throw anything in the fryer and call it a chicken tender. Because one time the sixth graders were doing experience with mice and the mice went missing, and then this is what we were served the next day. Coincidence? And they know they were supposed to be boneless, right? Because sometimes you take a bite and it was like a kinder surprise. Do things they fed us for school lunch that we should not have been eating. We the fish sticks. These were served to us pretty frozen, so like they were afraid if they thawed all the way, they might start swimming again. Like one time the nurse ran out of ice packs, so she just started using these. I ran into the monkey bars that day, and I had to walk around with a fish stick on my forehead the whole day. And what fish was this? Because I know they were not serving us smoked salmon, koi, maybe goldfish. So we the apples. These were always so bruised, like they just finished up one of those Logan Paul UFC fights and cutting the apple through the core. Someone called BuzzFeed unsolved because I think I just found signs of alien life. I know no human in their right mind is doing that. That's unsettling. And we have mozzarella sticks. The cheese on these was always so stringy would never break it was like they put silly putty in the fryer and thought we didn't notice seriously you'd have half in your stomach the other half in your hand and a horrible umbilical cord of cheese between the two that you were trying desperately to bite these are things they fed us for school lunch that we should not have been eating. First up, we have the french fries. These had less flavor than a Moms Against Managers Facebook group. Where was the salt? Seriously, if you're gonna feed me cardboard, just feed me cardboard. At least that's low calorie. So we have push-ups. Every once in a while, these would make their way into the ice cream bin, and they always got snatched up so fast, but I think it was just like a Louis Vuitton bag where it was scarcity that made them popular because they were not great. You'd always get like a purple ring around your mouth from eating these. Like you were getting a little bit too cozy with Grimace from McDonald's, and they would not push up. Like it hurt your hand to try to like make them move. And we have mystery meat. When I was a kid, I thought this was so funny. I was like, ooh, it's a mystery. And now I'm mortified. This is not Scooby-Doo. I'm not trying to figure out what the next Taylor Swift free record is. I'm just trying to eat my lunch and know what it is. How do you serve this to us and not know? But I do have to say that one time raccoons were terrorizing our playground and then all of a sudden they were gone one day and this was on the menu the next day. I'm not saying, but things they fed us for school lunch that we should not have been eating. Breakfast edition. So we have the pancakes. This looks like something you'd find at a dinosaur excavation site, like fossilized dinosaur poo. Honestly, it looks like a dog biscuit and it tastes worse. I know, I've had both. And these were so dry. Like you could not eat these without washing it down with some milk. You'd be like... We have the milk cartons. Now, it was always a good day when you got one of these that wasn't expired. It always had a lot of ice chunks in it. And we were like, yay, slushies. But looking back, that wasn't a good thing. But this probably had, like, the most nutrients out of anything we got. So that's pretty good. Finally, we have the sausage. What is this? This looks like it was mummified. Like, Egypt was like, we got too many mummies. We need to get rid of a couple. Like, honestly, they say it's from 2021. But are they talking BC? Because I'm really not sure. If you drop this on the ground and your dog isn't interested, please do not eat it.